time for another rig rundown, and we're really excited to be here doing. <laughs> Doug Aldrich is here, folks, and we're with the Dead Daisies today, man. And you know Doug probably from Dio and White Snake, and he's just a badass man with a heart full of tone. And he's going to tell us about his rig. You want to start with this Les Paul right I, here? Yes. I, by the way, I like that heart full of tone. <laughs> That's what we all need—a heart full of tone. And there's only one, for sure, way that I know to do that is with a Les Paul. All right. And a Marshall couple of pedals and uh, so this is my this is my go-to guitar I got this in 2008 uh, it's a 57 reissue from a custom shop it's got John Sir and I made some some signature pickups mm -hmm. it's got John Sir pickups in it I put some 70s knobs on it that reminded me of when I was a kid I had a, my first guitar was a 73 gold top deluxe so it, I just I always this love is, them. Yeah, this is like revisiting that for you. And uh, Tone Pro's keys. I've this guitar's been refretted already uh, by a guy called Bruce Nelson out of LA. He's he does Nelson guitars. But this I've got probably five or six gold tops, and this is my favorite one. Excellent. I'm it's gonna just, guess those pickups are wound extra hot. They're very sexy hot pickups. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're a little hot. <laughs> So you got, it's, it's basically I go for like a big open sound for the, the main sound mm -hmm. when I gain it up a little bit for solos or something. But this is a nice, basically just a nice tone. And, and do it, you change out the pots and caps in your uh, Les Pauls at no, all? Or? No, no. Okay. These got the Bumblebee caps in them okay. that, the, that Gibson put them in. It's, uh, just, I just changed the pickups. Although their, their pickups sound great too. I mean, they got, the, they got a whole array of killer pickups. I'm just... I love these. Yeah, man. And they're, they're in all my Les Pauls. Got to go with what you love. Front pickup, really nice, warm wo woman tone. <laughs> then. <laughs> kind of like just a very clean but big sound, you yeah. know? That's my main, you know, it's, it's pretty clean. It's, it's, I've got a Electrosonics wireless system. Mm -hmm. Now, I am definitely all about the cable. Straight in, that's the best way, or through as minimal pedals as you can. But if you're gonna use a wireless, this is the, the best one I've found, is Electrosonics. It's, um, it's pretty much, I, you really have to, you have to really measure it to see if there was any difference, because it feels like a cable. Nice. Which, I, which I like. And there's no cab company call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, what happened is, what happened is, is we would be doing these gigs, I'd be on a cable, we'd be doing these gigs supporting somebody like, for example, Hollywood Vampires with Johnny Depp and Ace, uh, um, Alice Cooper, and there'd be all this stuff on the stage, like smoke bomb pots and lights and fans and stuff, and I'd be doing a festival, and I'm trying to fish my guitar so I can get out to the thing. <laughs> And it's just like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta go wireless. Yeah. It's just, that way you can get where you wanna get to and there's no worry. But really, I'd be playing a rhythm part and, and keep doing a Richie Blackmore trying to get myself <laughs> through this minefield. So, uh, but anyway, I love this guitar. I've probably played a bazillion gigs, if not more. And by the way, the reason for the black pick card is when I, I, when I got this guitar, um, it, it didn't have a pick guard, and I just happened to put a black one on because I need I need a pick guard for my finger the way I the way I play. Yeah, and it, I kind of pivot off of it. And uh, I thought the black at first I was like I'll just put it on temporarily, but then I started to go, I really dig it. It matches the headstock. It's kind of like a black eye, so I call it the black right. eye Les Paul. Oh, awesome! And it's black something eye you eye. don't see all the time either, which is also cool. Yeah. yeah. That said, I do have a couple of vintage gold tops that have the proper pick guard on them. So. Um. Shall we move on to another guitar? Yeah. Let's switch one out. This is a guitar I acquired during COVID. Um, I was I was at a, a friend's place in California, and um, Gibson had sent out this guitar to him to, to, to do some work on. And I saw it, and I played it, and I just fell in love with it. I don't, I've got a couple of bursts, but nothing like this. This is just like, it just looks insane. You know, the way you can, the way the flames move and- um, Yeah, the match on the top is really beautiful. I was at Gibson today and I, and I brought it and they were just like, yeah, that thing's, it's serious. But um, it's, it's the same thing. Um, 
This one's got Gibson tuners on it. I did refret it, and uh, the pickups are, are the Sur pickups. And uh, this knob, you can see, Ted, that it's, oh, yeah. chewed, it's chewed up. Yep. During COVID, we got a puppy. <laughs> I get the it's guitar. literally chewed up. No, I get, I, I get my sunburst, my burst, my 59 <laughs> burst comes home. And then I get the puppy, and then I'm walking out, and the puppy's chewing on the guitar. Chewed it here, you know. I didn't. Re I forgot about teething, you know. That yeah, thing. oh yeah. They but, it, but this guitar barks, and I'm using it for, um, <laughs> it's got a really clear tone to it, so I'm using it for some uh, cleaner stuff, too. Uh, like... <laughs> clean but big yeah this one getting you some of the blackmore territory that you guys cover with this band, yeah or? yeah I, sometimes you know um you know people would go why aren't you using a strat and i'm like because i got my les paul and it <laughs> and it's clean and it sounds really good it speaks really well for those types of blackmore types of things mm -hmm. um <laughs> um but yeah the middle position it's got a great tubey sound to it. And I should mention that I'm using um, Dunlop strings on all these guitars. We're tuned down a little bit. These are 11 to 50. Okay. So it's... And what are you tuned down? You tuned down a half step? Whole, we're down a whole step. Down a whole step, okay. For this, cool. just just because we've got a, a, a long array of uh, uh, different songs with. You know, it's just nice to yeah, give it Yeah, you guys are covering a lot of territory. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it, it, um, it's heavy. So that's yeah. always good. That's what I have to ask you. As a dog lover, what kind of puppy? Boston Terrier. Nice. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let me get one more guitar. Yes. All right, we, got another, we have another gold tie. Yeah, this is, a, this is not an actual, this is not a Gibson. This is a company called Scala. Okay. And uh, Leo Scala is a, is a custom luthier he builds amazing guitars and he works together with Gibson on they've got several projects that they work on together and um, so this was uh, a guitar that that Leo I had actually had a Scala guitar before and um, I, I didn't play it that much and Leo said hey you know let me build you something that something that you, that you would really play more and yeah I, I just said let's let's do an all gold gold top and it's uh, it's very much like a Gibson, um, it's a little different neck shape. It's got a little different tone to it. This has got a, a, a wrap bridge, so it's oh yeah, um, wrap bridge. It's kind of kind of a different yep. tension. It looks like it thins out a little bit more at the top of the head, at the top of the neck too. It's still it's still chunky. I like mm -hmm. a I like a neck chunky. So big so that's basically the guitar all gold with the special oh I should say it's called the golden ruby okay my daughter's name is Ruby oh nice and Very so sweet. he he put this um, skull with a little diamond cut ruby in it and he signed it the golden ruby and then really and is it also mahogany body it is okay. mahogany body and maple maple top and my daughter ruby um she started to practice here and then she practiced here <laughs> and finally she got it right right there and it was the end of school she's in preschool she's five and she took it to school as a show and tell at the end of the year oh nice and she's like my daddy plays guitar and and he he has a guitar called the Golden Ruby that they named after me, and I'm going to be a guitar player when I grow up. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. But anyways. Um, what kind of pickups are in that one? This is the same thing. John Excellent. Sir, John Sir pickups. Cool. It's just a good, you know. They all, they're very similar um, in terms of the overall tone, but they're, every guitar is a little different, you know, so you just 
figure out what works on it and So there you have it. Those are the three awesome. guitars I got on this run. You'll see them later, but the, the amps I'm playing through are vintage Marshalls. Um, this one's a 1978 that's been modded by uh, John Sur, did the mod on that one. Um, it's kind of a, uh, you can see it's not super gainy, but it could be you mm -hmm. know, if I turned it up. With, with the Dead Daisies, we kind of go for a little bit cleaner sound. Um, but it's from 1978, it was a four input Mas uh, non master, now it's got two masters, so I can kick it up a little bit for solos. Yep. And then, um, it, like I said. And, and what other mod do you do on that? I know you replaced one of the inputs with a pot there. That's a, that's a, that's a uh, preamp. That's the preamp. Yep. Pot. Okay. Cool. And then there's two masters, and then the rest is regular. To make room for the other master. Right. It's got an effects loop in it, so I can run a delay or a reverb or something. I use delay for. Are you using the uh, H9 for that? Yes. Cool. I have an H9 in the loop, and it works. Work, I have it set to just a static delay sound, nothing really special. And then this is um, this is ba basically their clones. It's it's the same thing except this one was was a master um, originally, but I just moved the, the preamp knob in a little bit. Now it's got um, two master volumes. The same thing. It, that's from 1979. That's the first amp I bought. I moved to Los Angeles in '81, and um, that was I went to Guitar Center and bought that. Awesome. I've and had it for ages. Are obviously. the cabs vintage too? Pardon me. Are the cabs vintage too? These are uh, reissue cabinets. With these okay. are got Greenback twenty twenty um, fives in them. Cool. And um, but I'm anxious to. I've just been working with Celestia. I'm anxious to try those Creamback that are seemingly. Re I want to. I couldn't get them in time for the tour, but I want to try those. Yeah, man. That Creamback cool. Celestians. So uh, I'm playing through two cabinets, miking one of them with two 57s. That way the sound man's got some, some choice. And then there's also a um, Palmer uh, line driver in the back that he's getting a cabinet simulated off of the amp. Choices are a good thing. Vintage, <laughs> vintage Marshalls, I you know, know it's like... I got a 72 Super Lead. I would not part with it for the world. That's know? a great amp. Oh man, it's killer. 50 watt, it's killer. It's, that's perfect. Yeah. Because those, you know, I would just, I get in trouble if I'm cranking too loud, oh, you know? Yeah. This yeah. Of house guy's like going, hey, you're killing me. I can't get you in the PA, you know? I'm like, okay, let me, but you, you got, it's a, it's really a fine line. I know you have to have it up so you can really get the guitar to respond. Yeah, you want to be able to get feed, you, want. you know, yeah. feedback or whatever. So you got to get like super. But when it's, when it's, when I got the monitors on, it's a bit louder, so there's more. Ah, thank you All for right. my daily dose of Marshall. So, <laughs> so Les Paul style or um, whatever into the pedals. Um, I've got. Basically, I'm a Dunlop guy. I use Dunlop strings, as I said, Dunlop picks, and um, Dunlop has MXRs under their, yep. their brand. Yep. Um, Dunlop slides, everything. But we're back to the number one. So yes. let's uh, take us through the pedal board of that. Okay. So I'm going out of the Lex uh, Electrosonics receiver directly into Phase 90 by MXR. Uh -huh. slow but you can also speed it up you know yeah. for that that kind of uh okay so out of that um, I'm going into a custom audio electronics wah that's made by Dunlop it's my favorite wah it's a dual fazzle fizzle what is it Fazel? Fazel. <laughs> and, uh, but I use the standard one and it's got a boost on it, which is really nice for certain, oh, cool. certain things. I don't need it for this, 
but um, it's a great wah. <laughs> Uh, then out of that into Custom Audio Electronics Drive, which we talked about. Yep. So without it... It's, it's at just a bit of crunch. And then the, um, it's got a clean boost as well, which is nice. It's a little different tone. And you can use them both. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really great pedal. I love it. Um, I've got an MXR carbon copy that I use for certain delay things. You know, right now it's just set to a kind of a, for swells and stuff. Basic analog delay. <laughs> now I've got this other pedal here. It's a stand. It's it's a it's a stand-in because um, I I just got a new uni. I love the Univibe thing mm -hmm. for for ends of songs or certain solos or sometimes I'll copy a keyboard solo or something. I love it Univibe. So this is a, 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 a one called um, it's called the DVK Gold Top, and it's a nice. <laughs> So just kind of univibe, you can speed it up and, and yep. all that, but it's... And, and what's it standing in for right now? It's standing in know. for a, um, a, a Dunlop um, Jimi Hendrix Univibe. Cool. Uh, that's cool. the one I've... It's coming tonight, but I didn't... I had to get a new one. So uh, this is a stand-in for soundcheck. The rest is pretty simple. I've got a tuner. I've got an MXR talk box. Yeah, talk um, box. We're, not, we're not using the talk box tonight, but I use it a lot. It's, it's the best one out there. And then um, this is the boost for the, uh, for this, for the solos. Um, it's just a little bit of a clean boost. And then the, the Eventide which is the delay in the loop. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. That's, well, thank you so much, man. That's basically it. Yeah, thank you guys. Truly appreciate it. <laughs> hey, it's always good to see you guys, and um, thanks to your, your followers and readers and viewers. Appreciate it. And um, this is a simple rig. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, man. Well, thanks for bringing us badass tone. We appreciate it. Right on. <laughs> thanks, brother. And now I'm here with uh, the man who put some lava in the rock for what? Dead Daisies. <laughs> lava in the rock, man. Okay. You, you <laughs> it's, it's molten. It's boiling. Uh, and uh, Glenn, it's great oh, to be here with you, man. I truly it. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And why don't you tell us about this bass? It looks like it's already had a life. Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, a Bill Nash it's bass, of course. I've been playing Bill Nash basses for 12 years. Um, the only basses I play live on stage. Uh, I can I get uh, J bass, of course, and I got P basses, and uh, it's the J bass and P bass I use all the time. 
This one is, of course, purple. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really happy with these bases. Great. And what kind of pickups does it have? These are Lola pickups. Hmm. Fantastic pickups. Excellent. Anything uh, about it that we should know about that's unusual? Any customizations? Um, no, or? It's, a, it's standard Bill Nash base made for myself. So it's a really thin neck, custom neck. And um, it's one of the three jazz bases I've got. Well, it sounds terrific. Can you give us a taste of the sound? Sure. All right, and you're using a pair of orange heads today. I never go anywhere without my orange AD200 heads and two times 810 speakers, sometimes four times 810 speakers. <laughs> All right, and what uh, sort of caused you to arrive at this formula for sound? Me? What drove you to choose these amps? Oh, yeah, what do you love um, about them? What's the thing that makes you happy? About 12 years ago, I found myself at the NAMM show, as we do. I was walking around and I bumped into my dear friend, Cliff Cooper, the owner of Orange, and he asked me to come into a little room at the booth and uh, plugged in to these amps with a, took a P bass off the wall, plugged straight in, and I found my sound I've lost for a while. And I've been with Orange ever since, and that's where I belong. It's my sound, really. Cool. Well, it sounds great in the room here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure's <laughs> mine. And you have a small pedal board? Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I got. Um, Black Cat Fuzz, for sure, it's a, my favorite fuzz pedals. It's a huge part of my sound. It's a Black Cat Octave Fudge, fuzz, fudge as well, I guess. <laughs> uh, but it's a huge part of my sound. A nice, uh, a nice rack Y uh, uh, boost to, for volume when I need a little extra volume. And um, my rig is run by a nice rack Y as well. Split the amps through the nice rack Y. It's all that. And the octave fuzz. And there's an octave, o octave pedal, which uh, I use as a wah wah, you know. Could we hear a little bit of that? Yeah, yeah, we can. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate you coming out and talking to us today. Thank you. Uh, news for you there's something Glenn and Orange happening soon which we'll let you know more about right and you guys have a new album as well don't you yeah called Holy Ground right it's been out for four or five months doing really good so I'm really happy that you heard it if not pick it up <laughs> well thanks again man. Is mine. Thank really appreciate so it thank, thank you, you. see you thank you, you kindly too. thank you